Good morning. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about PPE, personal protective equipment. If we were actually in our classroom, I would talk to you and let you actually handle some of the personal protective equipment that you would become most familiar with here in our labs in Hudson Hall. However, a lot of personal protective equipment applies to so many of our other areas in life. As you well know by this point during our COVID-19 pandemic, um, personal protective equipment became in very short supply over the last few months, six months, seven months. So in particular, gloves, respirators, masks, those all were in super short supply. So you have learned more probably from the pandemic than I could ever teach you about proper handling of PPE, which is good in many ways and rather unfortunate in others. I wanted to show you some examples of a few types of PPE you might encounter here in Hudson Hall. And your videos this week also show a little bit of that. So these lab coats, I've got a few on a rack right here. You may see these sometimes in labs that you enter. Um, in particular, our chemistry labs always have these blue coats. These are, shockingly, about $300 a piece. So in a typical semester, we will um, rent them from a company and this vendor brings them to us and picks them up and launders them because these in particular need special laundering and I'm gonna explain that to you in a second. So on the video, you'll see our white lab coats which we get from the vendor and typically those have a chemical protectant coating on them which is super neat. The video shows that a little bit. Um, if I could actually hold the coat up for you and splash something on it, you would see even better. And you would also see why it's super important to wear closed toed shoes in the lab because when you have one of those coats on and you get a chemical on it, it just drips down to the floor rather than penetrating through and touching your skin. So if you have open toed shoes or your feet are exposed in any fashion, it can leak onto your feet. However, these are actually my favorite coats um, and I, have really gotten to understand the working of these coats in the last few years. So these coats are made of a material, um, a proprietary material called Nomex. And Nomex is a flame resistant material. The flame resistant coats we use are typically this blue material and they have these great cuffs. Um, anytime you work with lab coats for a lot of years, when I was working in research science, we didn't have these cuffs on most of our coats. Um, when you work in a containment unit, off, often you do, and it's nice because you can pull your gloves over it and have kind of a sealed protection so that nothing's getting in that space between your sleeve and your glove. So if you really want to stay safe from something, um, an infectious organism, that's super helpful. These are great and definitely um, could assist you in surviving a fire. They are not completely um, resistant to fire. However, they are flame resistant in that they do not burn as quickly and it gives you more time to get out of the coat, to stop the fire, to have someone assist you, to get under a safety shower. It gives you a little more time in the event of an emergency. Um, so they delay the fire. And these coats are super well made. Um, you should always wear your lab coat properly buttoned up have your sleeves all the way down and your coat should go about to, you know, below. This one hits my knees, which is great. So the more area it covers that you can still freely move with, your coat should be well fitting um, and not super tight, not super loose so that the sleeves are all draping all, all over your science. So that is the coats that you will see in the video. You'll see throughout our labs, boxes of gloves and they may look a little different Typically you see these purple ones. I'm really partial to these because these gloves, if you read along the bottom, you can learn about these gloves and see what their permeability is and what the degradation factor is. So depending on the glove, when you have um, a chemical, it can eat through the glove or degrade the glove. And this has all been measured out for various chemicals and there's a beautiful chart in all of our labs. It's the Ansel glove chart. And if you look and see what chemical you're working, with, you can see which gloves you should be wearing and what qualities, um, what qualifications your gloves should have in order to work with that chemical. For example, acetone, the kind we use for nail polish remover or 
cleaning up paint or anything like that, acetone actually can eat through gloves. So you should be using a different type of glove. So that's really important to know. Um, and there's also something called the breakthrough time. So sometimes you can use a glove as long as you're not using it for an extended period of time. Like I'm not immersing my hand in the chemical and just letting it sit there. Um, a splash factor, you know, if you just splash it on, it's okay. But on other times there is, and I'd love for you to look up Karen Wetterhahn, who worked at Dartmouth University. I always talk about some really critical stories that impacted me, and her story really does. Apparently she um, was local and maybe lived around Rouse's Point, somewhere up in that northern area at one time. But she was working at Dartmouth, and she was working, I believe, with NMR and heavy metals. And she was working with mercury, and she ended up, um, during her work, she had double gloves, both of her, you know, she double gloved up, and this is quite some time ago, um, and she had a small, really tiny splash of the mercury she was using onto her glove, and if you know anything about mercury, you know it's incredibly toxic, and there's a difference between organic mercury and elemental mercury. She was working with organic mercury. Back in the day, people used to kind of play with the mercury that was in thermometers. They apparently didn't know it was dangerous. Um, it's also not as bad as organic mercury, which she, I believe, was working with dimethyl mercury. So that's an organic mercury. And that one tiny drop, she knew immediately, took off her gloves, um, washed her hands, re-gloved. I believe she washed her hands, but she definitely re-gloved up, continued working. A few months later, she started having um, issues with her memory and she was having some neurological issues and people she worked with kept saying I don't know what's up with Karen she seems a little off and she herself being as brilliant as she was noticed that um, oh I know I got mercury poisoning when when that happened but I had both my gloves on back then they didn't know about the permeation factors the degradation time stuff like that to do with gloves so um, she checked herself into the hospital and just a few short months later she died um, her death was absolutely not in vain because we learned so much from that but it's a horrible loss to science to the world um, because she was a brilliant researcher and um, it was just one small drop so that i don't tell you these stories to scare you i tell you these stories so that you will know to be safe and when you go out into the world to work hopefully you will not um, have an employer who doesn't provide you with the protect PPE, but that also could happen. And you have the right to always demand that you have the appropriate tools to do your job. So um, I always wear gloves when I'm picking up hazardous chemicals throughout our building. I wear my lab coat. And the next thing, safety glasses, that's a big one. Um, in a lot of labs here, you will be wearing safety glasses. And there's so many different types. And usually when I'm lecturing, in this class, I like to tell you, actually, this isn't a class. This is um, my chemical receiving room where I check in all of the chemicals. Um, so typically people, and this one's broken, but these are basically for a shop. Now you can see that these are very thin. They're not protecting much on me. Things can get underneath, above, around. Um, same goes with these, which is what people choose in any lab I ever teach. People want these kind of goggles. Now these are a little better, they have a slight vent on the side, they come up underneath a little, but you can still see that things could get around this and it's not ideal. Now the ones people hate and never choose when I'm teaching are these old school buddies, but they actually are pretty good. So these, you can see, come all around your face and close you in. So this is nice, right? And you can see that I can't get my fingers under there or around. And usually there's some venting so that they don't fog up as much, which we're gonna get to, which we have gotten to experience with COVID because our masks cause things to fog up all of our glasses. These are exceptional safety glasses. These are great. They have this little rubber lip, so they keep things protected. They have on the bottom, there's a little venting underneath the nose, but there's also this rubber seal. So that when I put these on and put these around my head, it is an airtight seal so that these chemicals, um, forget the strap, I just didn't want to hook it around my head. These chemicals are super tight in here and really 
the chemicals aren't, the goggles are super tight. And you can't get anything in through here and you have a lot of splash protection. There's also a difference between goggles that are impact protection, which is something you would use um, in a wood shop or maybe a physics lab. And then there's goggles that are great for chemical or biological agents. Another thing you would use is a respirator. Um, you have to be uh, respirator trained to use a respirator here. And so the typical masks we're using for COVID are not something you need to be trained for, but N95s you need to be trained for and you get fit tested. I usually go over to get fit tested for my full face respirator, which I would use for cleaning up spills. So when you get tested for that, they put a mask on you and they have um, tubes coming in so that they can measure how much air is getting in and out of your mask. It's actually kind of cool. And they make you do all these really different little tests. Um, they make you read a passage so that way your mouth is moving, they can see how your respirator is shifting. And again, COVID has taught us that when our mouth is moving, our face masks slip down. Same thing with a full face respirator, it does the same type of thing. So um, they have you read a passage, they have you bend over, they have you like stretch your arms, do some exercises do a little bit of stuff to see if you're actually able to keep the respirator and how tight the seal is and how many things can come in and out. And I think they use, I don't know, it's like water particles or salt particles. It's some type of particles that they can measure. Um, it's actually very cool. So that is, I'm trying to think of what other PPE I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so the respirators, Safety glasses, gloves, those are very important for us. Um, there are full hazmat suits, depending on what you're cleaning up, booties. Um, you just wanna always be careful to protect your body from chemicals. As we know better, we should do better. So you're noticing that people are eating better and not wanting to eat things with pesticides and trying to avoid chemicals in our lives. Well, now we know better, so we can do better with chemicals in our labs and we can keep them off of our skin and out of our bodies and be safer. So I'm hoping that with this class, you will learn how to be safer when you go out in the world um, and get a job in science or in nursing or in teaching and teach other people or any field. Um, there are so many fields that use personal protective equipment. So if you have any questions, always you can email me. I try and write back as quick as I can and I'm grading things typically um, as I get them, but I'm putting them on Moodle on Monday usually. It's just a better timing wise for me. So if you need anything, please let me know. Message me, stop by my office, I'm always there. Um, there's a little gate across the door, but we can talk through that. Um, and that's it. I hope you all have a great week. Welcome to week three. And um, please let me know if I can help.